Hello, this is Sarah Brosh. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So I wanted to make a video about the bogus Living While Black incident at SFA State U in Texas, the SFA State University in Texas. And you probably heard about this. Um, it was a flash in the pan. Uh, and but everybody got real excited thinking that it was another living while black incident that they were going to be able to make moral outrage industry money off of by destroying the lives of innocent college girls and probably getting them killed. No one cared about that, of course. Everybody just got real excited, got dollar signs in their eyes. So what happened was, is that, is this going on a week ago now? I think it's going on a week ago now. Anyway, so there was an incident and what was immediately reported in the fake news press, including the Washington Post and CBS News and NBC News and CNN, and of course, uh, the usual suspects, the Grio, Atlanta Black Star and The Root, is that uh, in the middle of the night at about 3 a.m., campus police officers at SFA University, State University in Texas, um, near, kind of, I guess it's kind of in between Houston and Dallas. Uh, the campus police officers stormed into the dorm room. This is what was reported. This was the initial false report. Okay, this was the initial false report. It was pretty obvious that it was false. And I think now we need to consider whether or not this was something of a race or hate crime hoax. Not like what happened to me at Yale during the living or napping while black hate crime hoax at Yale, but more like the Central Park bird watching incident, which I consider to be something of a race hoax at this point, a living while black race hoax. And it's the, it's the taking advantage of an opportunity and exploiting it for moral outrage industry money and fame that makes it a hoax after the fact you know um stating misstating lying about the fact that it was a racial incident um and exploiting that after the fact that's what i consider to why I consider the Central Park bird watching incident to be something of a living while black race hoax at this point. That's what I feel Melody and Christian Cooper did. But anyway, so the initial false report is that campus police officers stormed into the dorm room of a black student, a black freshman, a female, a member of the cheerleading squad, and had guns drawn, were pointing guns at her, ready to shoot and kill her. This was the initial false report. And the reason why we were told the campus police officers did this was because her three white roommates, as well as some other girls, but we were initially told that it was primarily the three white roommates, as well as some other girls, who made a false criminal report against this young uh, black freshman and said that she was threatening to stab them with scissors. And that this is why, because of this false criminal report, this is why the campus police officers stormed into her dorm room in the middle of the night at about 3 a.m. with guns drawn, pointing guns at her, ready to shoot and kill her because they thought she was the threat because they thought she had been making threats against her white roommates, threatening to stab them with scissors. This was the initial false report. And it was immediately, everybody just went, bonkers over this report. Everybody got super excited to make moral outrage industry money. They, no one cared to take a breath, pause, and ask, you know, for the facts. Um, so immediately, including on Twitter and all social media, 
immediately uh, the usual suspects like D.L. Hewley and Tim Jacob Wise, Tim Wise, everybody was calling for these girls to be expelled, prosecuted for a racist hate crime, for their lives to be destroyed, for them to be doxxed, for them to be publicly branded as egregious, hateful racists so that they would never be able to work, never be able to support themselves. These are 18 year olds we're talking about. Um, and uh, it was pretty insane. It was pretty crazy. And the Washington Post came out with a similar type story. CBS News, uh, NBC News, everybody. And then of course, The Grio, The Root, Atlanta Black Star, BET. Um, everybody got real excited about this. Another living while black racist hate crime. And everybody was calling for heads on spikes of these other college girls. And I saw what was happening and I immediately just wanted to try to stop what was being done to these college girls because I recognized it as what was done to me, of course, at Yale. And I wanted to inject some reason and some calm and some sanity into the situation. So I immediately on Twitter started responding to all of the news outlets, all of the fake news outlets, and telling them, well, you know what? After the living or napping while black hate crime hoax at Yale, you almost got an entirely innocent anti-racism activist and Yale grad students killed. So maybe you wanna hit pause. Maybe you wanna take a breath until we know the facts of the matter, we know what actually happened, okay? Before you start calling for the destruction of the lives of 18-year-old college girls, all right? And there were a lot of red flags for me, a lot of red flags for me from the get-go. I immediately started to think that this could very possibly be a living while black race and hate crime hoax. Um, and one of the things that really jumped out at me was the fact that we were told that there was security footage at the dorm and that the security footage proved that Ms. Evans, the young woman, um, the 17 year old, the black freshman, who was, you know, that the campus police came into her room at 3 a.m., that we were told that this security footage, not police body cam footage, but that the security footage at the dorm proved that she was innocent. And that just raised so many questions in my mind. I didn't understand that. Like, how could security footage at the dorm prove that she was innocent and that she hadn't made threats to stab people with scissors? So I, I didn't want to guess at what that meant, but it just raised a lot of questions for me because to me that seemed to suggest that the security footage was footage of an, some kind of altercation between the girls. And so maybe they they were saying that she didn't actually have scissors in her, in her hand and you can see this on the security footage or maybe it's also an audio recording, which I doubt though. Um, it still, it just raised a lot of questions for me. And I was also really concerned because the Evans family, the family of the 17 year old, the young black woman, uh, she, she, her family uh, lawyered up and they had this attorney who was just viciously attacking these other college girls. Um, and they're all girls. I know 17, 18. I know 18 is technically an adult, but 17, 18 year old college girls, they're babies. They're all babies. They're all college girls. And, um, I mean, yes, they're young women. They're young women, and 18 is technically legally an adult, 
but they're so young. And so, but what really was a red flag for me was that the attorney of the Evans family was just saying things that were clearly meant to exacerbate the situation and turn it into a conflagration. And he was saying things like this gain of adults, you know, viciously made this false criminal report against a child. And yes, 17 is technically, legally a minor. It's a child, but she's a child. But there really is basically no difference between a 17-year-old and an 18-year-old, and it's so young. And so, you know, people were just calling for prosecution, expulsion, just devastation of the lives of these college girls. And so there were just a lot of red flags for me. So I started, I really went on a mission to try to stop, to try to minimize, minimize the harassment and abuse that these college girls were already being subjected to on social media, including Twitter. And I was really trying to, as much as possible to minimize their, the harassment and abuse of these college girls uh, in the fake news press. And I was telling them, just straight up telling them, um, you pretty much completely fucked up last time, okay? And multiple times. You have fucked up on multiple occasions and almost got innocent people killed. So why don't you take a breath? Why don't you take a fucking breath, Tim Wise? Why don't you hit the pause button, Tim Wise, and Washington Post, and CBS News, and NBC News, and The Root, and The Grio, and Atlanta Black Star, and BET? Why don't you hit the fucking pause button, and maybe we're not gonna get innocent people killed this time. Okay, maybe we're not gonna destroy innocent lives this time. Maybe we won't destroy someone's human and civil rights career this time. Why don't we all hit the fucking pause button and take a breath, okay? I know there's money to be made, but the lives of 18-year-old college girls is a little more important than your moral outrage industry profits. So anyway, so I really, I felt like I was helping. I felt like I was helping minimize the harassment and abuse of these girls as much as I possibly could. And then I got a, um, I got a DM, a message, a direct message from someone claiming to be affiliated, to be associated with the girls at SFA State U and to know the truth of the matter. And this person told me right away that race had nothing to do with it, that it was not a racial incident. And um, also explained some details. I didn't want to really, you know, I didn't want to do anything that would subject these girls to a doxing. I just tried to give advice, um, advice that I would give anyone, not legal advice. And I made it clear that it wasn't legal advice. I'm, it was just advice that I would give anyone in this situation. And I basically just said, number one, just lawyer up if you can at all, if you have any means to lawyer up, lawyer up, get an attorney immediately. Um, and I've been working with some attorneys whom I won't name at this time, but I've been working with some attorneys on a possible uh, nonprofit that would do this kind of work, that would reach out to people who are being subjected to cancellations, social media mobbings, living while black, and other types of, you know, race and hate crime hoaxes, having their lives destroyed, and and try to help them, help help them with le with legal help, with legal representation, help them with funds in case they get fired, that sort of thing. So, but I initially just said I gave them the same advice I would give to anyone. I said, lawyer up, get attorneys right away. If you can't get an attorney, I think. The only re if you had an if you could get an attorney first, I would say, hold off on going public with the truth. But I said to them, I said if you can't, because I the my contact told me that they couldn't afford attorneys, and I said, you know what, I I really do think you have to fight back immediately in that case. I think you have to go public with the truth immediately, because the false 
story is being established. That's what happened to me. The false story got established in the fake news press and on social media, and then that's it. It's, it becomes, once it's established, it becomes almost impossible to change it, to alter that. So um, I said, you just, you need to go public right away with the truth then, but I understand we're dealing with very young women, very young girls, 17 and 18 year olds, and this is a decision that they have to make with their families, okay, because it's going to affect the rest of their lives. They have the fight of their lives in front of them now. And, um, and I was also told by this contact that there was absolutely no way that these girls could be facing any kind of criminal charges for what happened. I wasn't given every single detail. I was just told that, um, that the other girls never contacted the campus police. It was the RA, the resident assistant in the dorm who contacted the campus police, that the other girls didn't, never wanted the, um, never wanted the campus police contacted. Uh, and as well as the fact that race had absolutely nothing to do with what happened. So I also told them make, uh, especially if you can't afford attorneys, make GoFundMe pages, make fundraising sites immediately to raise funds to hire attorneys. And I also said immediately get character letters. Get as many character letters as you can from as many persons of, of significance as you can and ask for permission to be able to release those publicly as well. But I said, I, I said, I'm only here to help and I'm only offering the advice that I would give to anyone. And of course, my first and foremost piece of advice always is do what you think is best. If you're in this situation, do what you think is best. And I always say that because you need to do what you think is best to try to save your life and career because you're the one who has to learn how to live with the results. And if you don't follow your own best advice and you take the advice of others and you're not able to save your life and career and you're not able to do that, then you're going to have a really hard time learning to live with that. You're going to have a really hard time living, learning to live with that. And I was very, very concerned that these girls would be doxxed if, if going public is not something that they had chosen to do and that their families had chosen to do. So I was trying really hard to make sure that that didn't happen. And the Evans family attorney was calling on social media for those college girls to be doxxed. So I just, that attorney is the most vile and sick piece of work. They have no business being an attorney. I saw what they were writing on Facebook. It was vile and disgusting, the things that they were saying about these girls, these other college girls. So anyway, so I did start posting immediately that I was in contact with someone who was claiming to be associated with the girls at SFA State U and who knew that the incident had nothing to do with race and that the other girls never wanted the campus police involved. And I explained the advice that I was giving to them and I was and, and that I was just, you know, there to help and that I didn't want to be intrusive, but if they needed my help, I was there to help and I know other people who can help. And if they want my help, I'm here to help. And that I was still doing everything that I could and then I started contacting CBS News, a, um, NBC News, you know, Washington Post, Tim Wise, uh, Ben Crump, the attorney Ben Crump, uh, said the most disgusting things about these college girls was calling for their lives to be destroyed via trial by Twitter without due process and was actually saying that they needed to be prosecuted under a Karen Act in te Texas, that Texas needed to promulgate a state law, a Karen Act, uh, criminalizing a false criminal report to the campus police that's motivated by race. Um, and I responded to him in the, in the most you know, assertive way, you know, being civil and respectful, but being very clear, Karen X are unconstitutional. And he 
should be ashamed of himself and he has no business being an attorney. If he's trying to prosecute someone via trial by Twitter without due process, and saying and falsely accusing those other college girls of having committed crimes when he has no idea what happened. He could get them killed. He has no idea what happened. And so I'm just furious. I'm, I'm furious about the whole thing. I'm furious with everyone involved who did this, that, that to these girls. So anyway, so I did everything I could and then you know, and then obviously, I think it was pretty much the next morning, the school, the administration held a press conference. And the first thing they said was that race had absolutely nothing to do with what happened. And um, the details that they provided of the incident of what happened made me realize that the contact that I had was telling the truth and was someone who was associated with these girls and who knew what actually happened. And I became, I became very concerned though immediately after hearing the press conference and then reading the statements from SFA, State U admin and police, because to me it seemed very much like they were trying to do to these girls what Yale did to me, which is try to get them to admit to some kind of wrongdoing, even if it wasn't race-based, even if it wasn't a racial incident. They still, and they were doing this in my estimation, the SFA, state U, admin and police, to deflect attention from themselves, to deflect blame from themselves for this situation. And, um, and, and that's exactly what Yale did to me. In July of 2018, Yale General Counsel admitted that, they, that there was absolutely no reason to think that I had ever acted out of racial animus or bias in my entire life. And then they, but they kept trying to get me to admit to wrongdoing, to get me to admit to harassment, just not racial harassment. And I felt like that's what SFA State U uh, admin and police were trying to do to these girls and suggesting that they still may have done something criminal and still may have filed a false report and and that they were going to get the DA involved, the local DA involved to decide whether or not to pursue criminal charges against these girls. And my contact told me that that is absolutely the most preposterous thing, that there's no way that the DA could bring criminal charges against these girls for what happened, for what they did. So anyway, so all of that happened and then of course as soon as the SFA state admin and police held this press conference first thing they said race had nothing to do with it it was immediately dropped in the fake news press because they had no further interest in it it's not a living well black incident that they can make moral outrage industry money off of by getting innocent college girls killed so they lost all interest. They lost all interest. Washington Post lost interest. CBS News lost interest. It was just basically a couple of local TV stations, a couple of local news outlets that said anything about the fact that the SFA State U admin and police admitted that race had nothing to do with what happened. And so, you know, uh, of course, NBC News lost interest, CNN lost interest. Do you think even one of these fake news outlets bothered to correct their initial false reports? Bothered to correct their initial false reports to help save the lives of these innocent college girls? No, not one. But still, for a full, like, 48 hours after the press conference, where the SFA state admin and police admitted that race had nothing to do with what happened, that it was the living while black incident that wasn't, that it was a bogus living while black incident. Um, for, for, for about 48 hours, and it's still ongoing a little bit, but for about 48 hours out thereafter, left and right it was still being posted as the living while black hate crime uh, you know, the whole, the initial false story was still being propagated across the internet, propagated across social media, 
left and right, including by blue checkmark public figures uh, that, you know, that these campus police charged into this black freshman's dorm room at 3 a.m. with guns drawn because there had been a false criminal report by her three white roommates that she was threatening to stab people with scissors. So that kept happening for like a full 48 hours after, you know, the, the press conference. And then there was another press conference the day, what I want to say, the day before yesterday. Yeah, on the 3rd of October, where the SFA state admin are actually asking the Evans family if they can release the police body cam video of the police officers entering Ms. Evans' dorm room to show that they did not, you know, storm into or barge into her, you know, dorm room with guns drawn, pointed at her, ready to shoot and kill her, that that never happened. So the school wants to release this police body cam video. Of course, they want to release the police body cam video uh, because it, it, you know, exonerates the police. And then the school doesn't have any problem. Unlike me, I'm still in my ongoing battle with Yale to get the police body cam footage from the Living or Napping Well Black hate crime hoax so that I can expose the gross malfeasance of the Yale admin and police. Then they are not keen, of course, to release the police body cam footage. But basically the SFA state admin on their, during their press conference on October 3rd, which was Friday, basically said that, you know, the Evans family and Ms. Evans lied in these initial, in their initial reports, their initial statements to the fake news press about what had happened, but they tried to soften it by saying, they understand that she was very traumatized. This was a very traumatizing event. And so that's what she recalled having happened. So they tried to avoid just outright calling her a liar. But anyway, so that's what happened. And still, even after that other press conference on October 3rd, on Friday, basically just a couple local news outlets reported on it. Not the Washington Post, no correction. No whoops are bad. Sorry, sorry we almost got college girls killed. Nothing from CBS News, nothing from NBC News, nothing from The Root, nothing from The Grio. So anyway, and then I also just had the feeling, and then they said that they had completed their the criminal side of their investigation with the campus police and that they had turned over the results of their investigation to the DA and it was up to the DA whether or not to file criminal charges against these other college girls. And like I've said, my contact said that would be absolutely preposterous. And it is my estimation that the SFA State U admin are basically just trying to insinuate still wrongdoing on the part of these other college girls and they said that they are continuing their internal investigation at the school to decide whether internally to you know file you know charges disciplinary charges against them as students and they would have to go they would have to attend a disciplinary hearing as students which i suspect they'll do just like yale did to me that they'll go ahead and file those charges regardless of what the result turns out to be but anyway, um, so, and, and in, in my estimation, as I've said, I think that they're merely doing this to deflect attention and blame from themselves. And they're doing what Yale did to me, which is trying to get these girls to admit to some other kind of wrongdoing. So I don't know everything that happened. I only know the bits and pieces that my contact told me. And I just wanna end by saying that you know, it should horrify and terrify everyone that pretty much I'm the main news source in the U.S. for the bogus Living Well Black incident at SFA, SFA State U at this point. And uh, that should terrify you. That should terrify you. It should tell you the state of the press in our, in our country. 
Um, you shouldn't believe a single word you read anymore. And the New York Times, LA Times, CNN, MSNBC, NBC News, ABC News, CBS News, basically just should not believe a word you read or anything they say on broadcast or cable news. You just shouldn't believe it. Shouldn't believe a word. It's all lies. It's all fake news. It's all lies. There's, there, I, I don't know who you can believe. I, I mean, I, I think you can believe me. I think I've shown you can believe me. I'm telling the truth. I'm not a journalist, but apparently I am now. Um, since I'm the only one basically reporting on this, and uh, besides a couple local news outlets in Texas. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to say that, and I also wanted to say I'm gonna do another video about, you know, the Harper's Letter signatories and my just furious rage at them. But I just wanna point out, not one, who stood up for these college girls at SFA State, U, SFA State U, who stood up for them? Who stood up for them? Even after people like Tim Wise were calling for their lives to be destroyed via trial by Twitter without due process. Even after it became clear that this was the Living Well Black incident that wasn't and that race had nothing to do with it. Who stood up for them? Who stood up for them? No one. No one. And I think it just shows that, you know, the Harper's Letter signatories and a, and a very sizable part of the anti-woke and anti-cancel culture crowd, especially the academics and the journalists and the media people, you know, they're only going to stand up and fight for the right victims. And that doesn't include, you know, poor white trash like me. They have just as much contempt for the poor as, you know, as, as the woke intersectional feminists do. Um, and the critical race theorists do. So anyway, I'm going to do another video about that, but I will have my PayPal me and GoFundMe links below. I love you all so much. Please support me. Please support my efforts to stop the fake news press and the moral outrage industry from getting one more innocent person killed, from destroying one more innocent life. We have to stop them. And I think the only way to really stop them is to sue them. I don't think they're gonna respond to anything else. They have to be stopped. So please donate to my legal fund and help me stop them so that this never happens to anyone else ever again. All right, thank you so much. I'll talk to you later. Okay, have a great night.